but I don't want to like hijack anything. <clears throat> um, I think it's just to touch base with people that are on the project and, you know, just to got to let somebody in. Okay. Just to touch base with fellow workers on the project. Um, I was telling everybody, hi there, Slava. I Hi. apologize. Um, I don't speak Russian. If anybody here doesn't speak English well, um, I was explaining. Let's just wait a minute. I'll, I'll explain in just a minute. Okay, Kelly. Let's wait okay. for some more people to connect here. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> so we've got Slava. I think Raymond. Can you hear me, Raymond? Yes. I'm Karen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Karen. Waiting, uh, people are just joining pretty quickly now. So let's just wait till they all show up and then I'll talk some more and then hopefully you guys will talk too. So for that, okay. okay. Got still people joining. I I was uh, telling everybody that um, Arthur had me create the Zoom link at the last minute, and I'm not as tech savvy as he is, so hopefully I won't will be able to streamline next time. Okay, I think we have 12 people. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit and hopefully we can all talk. Um, I am Karen, I um, am a social worker. I'm also a crisis response worker. I've worked with the fire and the police here in Maricopa County, Tempe, Arizona, United States. I'm seeing about everything you could see AKs before people having drastic situations. Um, and uh, I'm also a, I've got a master's degree in homeless security issues like FEMA. And I'm really happy to be here. Um, why don't we go around and um, everybody can just introduce themselves and tell us where you're from, and where you're at, if you feel comfortable doing that. And we only have a half an hour. So I, I want to go back and say one thing. The purpose of this meeting is just to connect, just to connect with other people on the project because it's really healthy to do that because you don't want to feel alone and isolated. Would you guys agree with, with that? And if anyone has anything pressing they need to talk about, go for it. Okay. Can I start? Yes, Kelly, go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly. I... Um, <laughs> I uh, have been an English teacher in Madrid the last four years, but um, upon, I guess, what was it, the 28th of February, I decided I need to change. So I quit my job last week and I'm getting rid of everything tonight, which is why I don't have Wong here and mm -hmm. I'll be going to Krakow tomorrow um, uh, to help. I don't know what, this is the only organization that I have reached out to because I figured that they would be so swamped with requests and people and as this organization has shown like sort of a bit suspicious or you know at least like careful about vetting and trying not to um, include somebody that is not here to help so um i don't wait what am i saying i'm really tired and trying to okay. organize my thoughts but i'm what i'm saying is i go tomorrow so i'm hoping to um I don't know, find groups, organizations. I have my own plan um, how to how to go about doing that. But right now, I don't know. I was I was right. I had there's somebody from Ukraine now I spoke with a week ago who I think is still in Krakow. I'm waiting for her to answer me. But I don't know. I don't know if this was an organization that would want somebody. I know you had critical roles that our door uh, posted about last week, and I tried to get them, but they said that. Thankfully, they were filled already. 
So I don't know. I was just hoping to find out. I didn't know what the point of this meeting was, but what 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 we can do on the ground at the border in Lviv or I don't know Western Ukraine or Eastern Poland. But I don't know if I'm going to get any answers from you guys on that here. <laughs> yeah, probably not here. Um, however, and and welcome to the new people that just joined. I want to say I'm Karen. I. I'm in this organization because I believe in the purpose for it. I feel like it's part of who I am to try to help people. I'm a social worker. I've got a license. I'm a licensed master, master social worker. I'm also a crisis response worker. And I have a degree in anthropology as well and work on FEMA, Homeland Security issues here in the United States. Um, and, you know, one really important thing is when people are involved in things like this, debriefing, somebody may have a lot of noise. Um, I hear some background noise. If everybody could mute for me. Host, host should be able to mute, just so you know. Pardon me? Okay. So the hosts can mute people. Okay. I am not tech savvy. So I'm just, I, I, I said that. I, I am. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Perfect. So um, one really important thing that I've, I've known for my career is working in stressful situations when you're tired, there's a lot going on, is really having people that you can debrief with and talk with. And that is really, really important. So I think one of the reasons um, for these meetings is just to have people to do that with if you need to. Just really informal. Um, I had something planned like icebreakers that we could, um, have a funny little thing to talk about and, and just like, what's your favorite book or things like that. But I don't think we're gonna have time because we have got so many people here. We only had a half an hour, but these are going to be continual meetings. There's, there's, there's no limit for the half an hour, just so really? you know. It, yeah, there's, there's no like, it won't work in half an hour. It's, oh. it's a case of um, the idea behind half an hour is to make you know, like the expectation and the, the requirements are low, not that they are like, if you if it's if, if in half an hour you have to leave it's not it's not like that in, Cor okay. in corona why we did a six hour call that was just a hangout so not <laughs> expecting anything like that but it's perfectly well, if, within never been a bit longer if, it, if people want to hang out and talk if that's comfortable well fine. my concern is i signed up under my own zoom account so i it could shut off in a half an hour so if it does that okay. I, I apologize um would anybody like to go ahead and um Talk and say where you're from and what's going on with you. My name's Greg Tomerdahl, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, leaving for Warsaw tomorrow at uh, 2.30 our time, arriving in Warsaw uh, 9.30, 21.30 uh, on Friday. It's, a, it's quite the trip. From there, uh, heading to um, Medica to, at this point, run... Uh, one of the safe houses or two of them or whatever, not sure when I get there. Um, in fact, if anybody is, happens to be heading from uh, Warsaw to Medica at any point tomorrow, I wouldn't turn down a ride. Uh, my wife and I, we've been doing disaster relief for uh, uh, disaster events in the United States for quite some time now. She's a retired firefighter and I've done EMT work for a number of years and uh, when something like this happens we get the calling to jump into the chaos and do what we can do to help folks um so looking forward to doing whatever it is that we can do she's not making this trip she's unable uh so i will be flying solo that sounds really really wonderful how do you feel about doing this Oh, fine. Do you feel um, excited? Do you feel nervous? The, well, the, the, the level of chaos is going to be amped up tenfold, I would imagine, from anything I'm accustomed to. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, one of the things that we've learned over the years is when you walk into these things, your focus has to be, I'm here to help the people, the refugees, the victims, the whatever, in any capacity I possibly can, whether it's um, helping them medically, pushing a broom, uh, whatever it might be, no, you know, divorce yourself from any ego or anything like that and just roll up your sleeves and jump in. 
The other thing you have to be prepared for is it's going to be absolute chaos beyond anything you've ever experienced. And you're on your own. You know, you may be part of an organization, but the organization, particularly in a war zone, is not going to rescue you. You can't count on that. You really have to adopt the mindset of being self-sufficient um, and pitching in in any way you can. Um, that's that's all I know. It's a good mindset. Can and, I... uh, Greg, do you have some, some experience with logistics? I'm sorry, with? Logistics. Oh, uh, yeah, not specifically as it relates to uh, uh, disasters. Mm -hmm. um, we do own a restoration company, firewater restoration company, and, uh, and that does involve a fair amount of post-incident logistics. In fact, okay. it's in large part post-incident logistics, but they're not large-scale disasters of this nature. Uh, normally, in, in these sorts of events, we uh, work medical. Okay, so probably I will introduce myself. My name is Slava, and uh, I'm from Kyiv. However, I live uh, for more, well, almost 11 years in the Netherlands, but I'm Ukrainian. And uh, I just got my parents evacuated yesterday from Kiev. Right. A few hours before uh, they started to bomb uh, our place. And uh, last week, uh, I spent three days driving to evacuate my mother-in-law. And uh, she had a heart attack in the train. So as you can understand, it's really well tough situation for not only for me but for all of us so i'm asking about logistics because uh, i'm involved in a few initiatives and uh, we have uh, people helping us already however we have uh, big problems uh, with um, structuring and organizing all demands coming from all people um, um, going to, to the european union from ukraine now because they basically have only a small bag and that's it. Um, and um, we need to organize uh, this process somehow and uh, we need to understand what they need. And uh, we need basically to create kind of digital catalog of all things. And uh, um, yeah, so if some of you um, has experience with it, it will be really helpful for us. Well, yeah, I, I can tell you, you know, to, um... I'm not a tech savvy guy. You talked about a digital blueprint or something like that. I'm a boots on the ground guy, but but I can help out. I, I will help out in any way I possibly can. Just reach out to me, shoot me a message, and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. give you whatever I got. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. I bet you feel really great getting your parents out of there. Yeah, finally. Because, uh, well, they told me... Uh, about two weeks ago that they decided to stay until the end. And uh, then, yeah, you know, because of situation started to, well, Decom obviously it, 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 it's, it's out of the control already. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it is. It, I, I have to tell you guys another thing. So I, I'm also a, what's called a super forecaster. And so back in November, um, and this is me debriefing, because I need to do it too. Back in November 2021, I predicted at 60% they were going to invade. So my emotions have been on alert for a long, long time. So my heart is totally invested in this, you know, and the future. Okay. Um, I just want to say I made Tyler the host or co-host because he's telling me he's better at tech stuff so i'm hoping we have longer than a half an hour okay who wants to talk now don't all jump at once i can uh, see uh, my name is siddhartha uh, i'm a computer programmer a web developer and i'm based in manhattan and i worked with uh, slava and tyler and Arthur in the corona Hawaii project so um <laughs> you know the best that i can do is uh, help out in the programming part and uh, so far, I haven't been able to. I, my work is in. I work at Pfizer for the bioinformatics, uh, for the COVID, and all of that stuff. But um, uh, I will be working with Vijay and uh, doing some programming, maybe like bringing up a page where people can, you know, reach out to senators. So that's my task right now. That's awesome. Where are you located again? 
uh, New York, Manhattan. New York, Manhattan. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. Who else wants to talk or debrief or anything? Meet your participants. How's everyone doing? I just thought I'd, I'd thought I'd sort of join in and say hi. Um, I don't really feel like I need to debrief. That's kind of because I've been doing a lot of my own debriefing, you know, debriefing in it elsewhere. Um, uh, but I am here to listen if if, it, if it's helpful. So anyone else wants to go, I'm happy to listen because I don't have family or relations in a war zone right now. So it's a lot easier for me to emotionally unpick that. Do you feel comfortable saying where you're located or no? I'm in the UK. Okay. If don't give you the, yeah, I'm in the UK. I've been um, my, all my whole my life. Um, see, and, and I'm originally, yeah, I, I knew Slava and Sadar and Arta and, uh, and, and a few other people in the Corona White Project to help run that. Um, couple of years ago now um but so yeah i'm i'm the only the only emotions i have around it is the fact that i know there's like people like slava anton and arta are all ukrainian and they were yeah. all big parts of the corona y initiative so I, I was like they're all they're all feeling this way more intrinsically and more emotionally than i am and i want to just work out if i can if there's any way i can help but yeah. i would also warn anyone who's making rash or sudden decisions to run off to go help make a plan do it sensibly, do it carefully. It's not an easy fix. And as much as it seems like running towards problems is really easy. And we're all prime examples of people who run towards problems to try and help. Running towards a war zone is not the same as running towards some problems. Yeah, it, the, the level of complexity and uncertainty is so much higher. It's um, I'm the sort of person who would run towards a problem I'd help in real life. If something blew up in the distance, I'd want to go and help. But that's a, an, an individual incident. Um, war, war is not an individual occurrence. And the, the, the social and emotional complexity and the whole situation is way more complicated. So just I want everyone to be mindful of the fact that making rash decisions, as much as it feels like it, it can be productive, it can also be really destructive if you're not careful. So make mindful decisions talk to people you care about who are around you who can help you make um sensible decisions as well because uh an inexperienced person on the ground in a war zone is not only a threat to themselves they are a threat to other people by putting themselves in danger when then people then other people need to try and help them so it's a do not rush off and make rash decisions i'm just giving everyone a heads up on that it's it's, it's a dangerous situation to put yourself in. And in, unless you are bringing some emotional resilience, it's, there's no version of it that's easy. I've spoke to enough people now that work in this sort of space and have worked in humanitarian aid for a little while. It's not easy. There's no version of it that's easy. So don't, don't downplay how difficult emotionally and physically it can be to deal with uncertainty in this environment. So everyone needs to be aware of that within yourselves and listen to yourself when you are worn out or tired or wired or looking to solve something because it feels like it's something because running towards a problem can just make more problems for yourself. So you've got to be careful with that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And uh, just to interject, um, one of the reasons people get PTSD sometimes is because they try to handle too much and you need to just look at what you're really doing and know what your limits are. Be, look at it squarely in the face and know what your limits are. And I agree if you're feeling hungry, tired, any of those things, just slow down and take a break. Okay, who wants to talk? Nobody? Can I say hey, goodbye Raymond. really quick? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yep, by all means, Kelly, and then Raymond can go. Okay, yeah, really quick. I got to go. I have to say goodbye to a family. And Tyler, I really appreciate everything you said. I'm probably the case that you're describing because I've just... You're not the only one. Here. You are You are not the only one is the, the <laughs> thing that I, the other people might see in this video. You, you are a prime example of someone who's just said something quite clearly to me. But there are the other people who have got this sort of, I need to go solve... And, and, and it's absolutely an endearingly beautiful humane trait to have, yeah. but it can yeah. just create chaos for yourself and others. And I just need everyone to like 
it's not it's not easy to take a pause and take a moment and really like ask why you are trying to do that but you've got to ask yourself why 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 repeatedly until you come up with an actual intrinsic reasoning behind it not just i want to do good because you you can do good data from a distance there are a thousand different ways you can be helpful you could be helpful in your local community that could feed into helping the effort you don't have to be on the front line that sounds like a really easy thing but it's actually one of the hardest things so yeah. sometimes working out what works for you in the moment can you've got to really ask them questions of yourself because it could be just using it as an excuse for yourself it could be a, a strategy to avoid something that as someone with adhd who avoids strategy yeah. has got the best avoidance strategies you've ever met I can come up with a thousand reasons to not do a thing that are not actually good reasons. They're just fucking hiding. I'm just pretending. I'm just lying to myself and to make myself feel better to self self soothe. I just want people to be aware that self soothing as an emotional strategy is definitely a thing. And when the more chaotic and more unstable things become, the more we use these strategies to pretend like we've got some control because not having control is terrifying for all of us. It's a really unhealthy, but we don't have control. And we don't have very much control of this situation, but running towards something we have no control of is an even more riskier strategy. Though it feels like more. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's a really high risk strategy. I'm just wanting to be mindful of them choices. It definitely is. And I don't know because I don't have experience. And I I, I think I have been mindful in the last weeks, but I could be wrong and I'll find out soon. But I just wanted to say if anybody needs like some role that's filled immediately at that area, I'm going to crack out tomorrow and I will be, I mean, mobile. I have no other commitments at the moment. And I don't really have any experience that you guys want at the moment, but I think I am knowledgeable and can become useful in some roles. So I just want to say goodbye. And if anybody, is there and thinks of me or needs a hand with something let me know i'll be around so thank you nice meeting you thanks you nice too. meeting you Kelly. Bye. yeah bye bye, bye. Good. Emma, best you, wishes you you chimed in and wanted to say something so i'm giving you the room to speak oh i just wanted to say hi pretty much uh i was i was actually with ukraine now when we were less than 200 people so it was crazy uh, seeing the growth. I, I'm French, I live in Berlin, so I also can see firsthand all the refugees coming um, at the station. I even have a family at home. It was amazing to, to have this, this such a close contact compared to what you were saying. It, it's true, people feel the need to, to go somewhere to do something. Um, and I think having a, a family at home kind of took away that need to move somewhere. Um, and yeah, I, I work in um, I work for the Robert Koch Institute. So I don't know if you guys know what it is. Um, I, I think in the US it's the equivalent of the CDC. I don't know what it is in England. Same. Um, and so I, I I'm, I'm not completely the- sure. I'm not completely sure what it's called in England either, actually. I think it's public health. I think it's yeah, just exactly. called the public, uh, it's public, public health, health uh, issues. And although I, I'm just doing administrative stuff, uh, I'm in a lot of contact with uh, biosecurity and biosafety, which is um, an interesting topic. And I hope it's not going to come into play with the, the situation, but it might. So, yeah. I yeah, have no, to. I just- I have to raise my hand. Um, the the meeting is going to end in ten minutes. I just had a little thing show up on my screen, um, and I don't know how to. I mean, it's saying I could upgrade, but that's going to take credit cards. And well, things worst, to come. worst case scenario, we could spin it up somewhere else or some other way. But but we'll see where, where okay. we are. We'll see where we are in ten minutes. Okay, I took back the host uh, uh, job because I had to let some people in. I they were in a re- waiting room. So just letting you guys know. Okay, so we welcome some more people. We only have 10 minutes, um, unfortunately, because I think we could probably stand this call for a lot longer, um, probably. Um, so do we want to go down and just say who we are and where we're from or what your background is a little bit? Just try to go fast. We got barely any time. Or do you guys want to hear me talk? Yeah, I can go. Right. On, uh, okay, go uh, ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Try so, to try to take two just, minutes. Yeah, yeah. So just okay. uh, saying hello from uh, from France and uh, 
I'm a, yeah, more on a computer tech and data science side and trying to help. And it's uh, really uh, feeling good to, to be with uh, all of you and trying to do good. So that's all. So it's short. And I think Raymond uh, wanted to, to talk. He's been uh, waving his hand for a moment. So maybe if he can unmute, uh, we can hear him. You're muted, Raymond. You have to unmute the mic. You're still Unmuting muting. is on the screen. If you go onto the screen. You can While you work it. on that, I just want to say real quick, I'm okay, going to drop it momentarily. And as I said to Slava, and I'll reiterate it to the group, um, I'm no expert. I've done these sorts of things a few times for, over the last 20 years. Um, if anybody needs anything, if there's any way in which you think my skill set might be helpful in terms of answering questions or resources, please do uh, message me, reach out, and I'll do anything I can for you. That's all. Thank you. Hey, you guys, I just want to let you know I upgraded my account so our meeting can go longer. I'm Richard okay. Hawkins, or known as Raymond, but I go by Richard. Um, I have been working with uh, Arthur um, on the financial side, part of the, the new finance committee that the organization has started. Um, I do have war experience. So through Vietnam, did two tours, so I know what war is like. And I have a special interest in this because my fiance and her daughter are located in Eastern Ukraine. So I'm here to either continue from the financial side or more than willing to go back over there uh, to work in security for the refugees that are coming out. So use me as you like. And in which city they located? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in Orange County, California. No, I mean, uh... I mean, you just mentioned that uh, your relatives located in Houston, Ukraine, but what? Uh, yes. And in... they're just outside of Mariupol. Well, sorry, uh, Mariupol. What city? Yes, Mariupol. They're outside of. Mariupol. Oh my God! Okay. Oh God! Wow. Man, my heart goes out for you on that one. Then that's a that's a really, really hard thing to be going through. I'm sure. Well, it's all I can do not to just go over there and go get them, but I made her, she made me promise that I wouldn't do that. So, prime ex a prime example of an exceptionally rash decision that could be made that you held yourself on because it's not easy. Sometimes not doing something is actually really hard, and well done for making a, a safe decision because you don't know how you're going to improve the situation. So, well done for being able to mm -hmm. hold yourself on that. But it's At not, least I, I can absolutely some... believe it's really hard for you. I, uh, when I was in Vietnam, I was in special ops and I've been kind of helping Arthur with, he expressed some frustration with the uh, special ops people that were working, he was working with. And I tried to help him understand exactly where they're coming from. And um, there's some things that I can bring, bring to the table. And I'm more than willing to do. And, uh, you know, maybe this is why God has uh, kept me alive all these years, is to do something to go over there and help. That's really wonderful. Can you guys still hear me? I just want to ask, because I was over there yes. on Zoom upgrading my account. It's still telling me there's four minutes left, but I upgraded, so hopefully it will continue. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. You probably I think have a Athena tried to speak mm -hmm. after while Raymond did. Okay. So she's more than welcome to take the mic now if she feels she wants to. Uh, yes. Hi. So I'm Athena and I'm from Singapore, which is in Southeast Asia, the little red dot that nobody knows of. Um, I actually have no ties to Ukraine, but I really wanted the help. So actually, I signed on first with the World Central Kitchen 
they are helping uh, by cooking meals for refugees in Poland. And I wanted to go there, but then I realized my COVID vaccination is not recognized there. So I can't go. And then I wanted to go to Ukraine to help out with the military and all, but uh, my government said if anybody goes there, it's a life sentence when you return. So that's out too. So yes, I'm free. Feeling pretty useless at the moment because there's nothing I can do. I tried donating, but I don't feel like I'm doing enough. Yeah. No matter how little you think you're doing, it, it, it the collective contributes more than you realize. But you need to understand again that you are not going to solve this by yourself. There's no version that anyone can, including the people who are there. Never mind that. So you need to be aware of yourself that again. You can't fix it, and that's fine. To expect that of yourself is holding yourself to a standard that's impossible. Don't worry about that. But it's nice that you want to help, and remember that within yourself, that you want to try and help. Again, just don't make rash decisions, please. <laughs> please don't make rash decisions that get yourself in prison or anything similar. Yes, thank you. My mom says the same thing. She's the one who keeps me from doing all kinds of stupid things. <laughs> again for, not to speak about myself but i go to a lot of groups with people with adhd and impulse control super big problem for people with adhd so we can sometimes make poor decisions in rash moments i have learned how to tell myself to slow the fuck down and make the better decision <laughs> you've got to do that sometimes and it's not easy especially when chaos is winning and 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 uncertainty is the is the is the, the currency of the day but um but thanks for joining and talking and sharing um, and I'm sure if there's time, someone can make use of you, but whatever you do, you're trying and that's, that's enough. So how, know that within yourself for now. Well, uh, thank you for having me. And uh, for context, I'm uh, mostly a fresh graduate, but I do some admin work. So anyone wants me to do some uh, office stuff or whatnot, I can help in that area. And uh, I, I think, like, can, can I uh, suggest something also? Uh, so, um, well, I'm quite deeply involved in uh, all of that uh, from the first days. And I know that Wikipedia, for example, uh, is being hacked by Russians. So if you'll find um, some articles uh, about this war, um, can you probably put on Slack some, some sources with Russian domain names? Because this is what we, we discovered in some countries like France, they are basically rewriting uh, information in a way that uh, it's uh, it's mostly cited in, from Russian sources and it's not objective. And this is really misinformation. And uh, uh, you know, because Wikipedia is considered as a as a trusted source, people trust the information and they can understand something different from reality. And Isn't I'm, Wikipedia usually locked down for current conflicting uh, situations? To no, stop no. So uh, I, I can tell you, I was very surprised when uh, we started to investigate this question. We, we discovered a Wikipedia article on the war in Ukraine, which was created uh, before the invasion started. Based in Spain. Sorry. Oops, let's go down. This okay. pop up same recording in progress. Yeah, uh, I was saying Daniel from Spain. I've got a background in computing science. That's what I do for a living. And I've been, I'm just the new guy in the block. I just joined uh, the Slack channel and tried to join the initiative like a week ago, namely. I've exchanged a few messages with Killian and um, with Robert Killian. And uh, but yeah, nothing much happening yet. I know the vetting process is slow. So yes, waiting patiently. Really, really, um, no, can express with what with what I have seen today, heard today from you guys, people that are going on the ground, uh, people with so much experience. I'm really newbie in all these in, in cooperation, and and I really want to help. And I'm here, yeah, to learn and uh, put up, you know, myself at your disposal for any computer things that I can try helping with. So that's, that's great. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Richard, we've got Emma, you, are, you, you can talk to, again if you want. We've got Ola, Rob, who haven't we heard from? 
Thomas? Did we, we heard from you? Okay. Yeah, Tom, Tom's spoken. Uh, okay. Guidel, Olivias, Guidel. Anna, Rob, uh, and Allah, uh, Ol Olha. I think it uh, sounds like Olga. Is it Olga? Yeah, Olga, that probably make more sense, yeah, but there's no G Olga. in there, so I'm not going to presume. Yeah, it so. is, because it's Olga, like in Ukrainian, Russian is Olga, in Ukrainian it's Olga. So that's, that's why awesome. I put H. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Olha. Are you in? Hi. You, you can tell us where you are. You don't have to. Anything yeah, that I'm you want to share? I'm in Ukraine in the west part. And uh, today I'm a bit sad because Mariupol is my hometown. And I, I, I don't live there for a while, but it's really heartbreaking what's happening there yeah. Yeah. so today I, i'm not much talking person i'm here to listen you guys you are amazing you're amazing yeah. how are you holding up how is how is where you are how is it um holding up there are you able to get outside are you able to go anywhere I am actually fine here. It's like almost in peaceful times. Yeah, it's outside. It's okay. Inside me, it's not okay because uh, it's heartbreaking for my country. And uh, being uh, here in uh, organization, it actually helps. It, it helps a lot to deal with uh, all, all of emotions. It does. I don't know who. It's not this. It's not this. It's not the same kind of thing. But it's one thing that we realized during Corona Y, and like global lockdowns and the pandemic was raging through the world, and there's nothing quite like I'm around people who care, and I'm around people who are trying to help, and I'm around people who are coming with kindness first to make you realize that you know there's some good in the world. There's some kind people who are trying to help. And, that, and, and if nothing else, that, that's good for your heart. You might not solve all the problems. You might not solve any, any problems, but at least standing side by side people and going, mm -hmm. I'm not alone. And I'm not, I'm not the only person who's, who's feeling like I want to do something and finding out other people from other parts of the world are all feeling that there's something to be said for sharing that moment. Even if, yeah, even if it's not productive, it's emotionally good for you. And, and we mm -hmm. are standing with you well, however we can. That was really um, Thank you. potent. It's true. I, I mean, sometimes you kind of wonder, like, what's up with humanity? How can people do this? Terrorists? How can they? How can they act like this? And it's and it's hard to realize that that there are people that are that that or that there's evil in the world. I actually wanted to to share something about maybe feeling useless or feeling connected or this type of thing. Um, so when I had uh, the Ukrainian family in my place, we walked a little bit through the, the streets in Berlin and you know, many people have Ukrainian flags at the windows or just uh, balloons or, or companies have projections of Ukrainian uh, flag. And I must say that at some point, I felt, oh, I myself had at work some little ribbons and then I felt really stupid. I thought, like, oh, why, why am I decorating myself? And what's this? It's so useless. Like it's, it's, hey, look at me. I support Ukraine, but I don't do anything. I just have a flag. And I felt a bit cynical about it. Um, but when they were there, uh, both the mother and the daughter, the daughter is 13, uh, and both the mother and the daughter, whenever they would see a flag, whether it was from like a big company or just someone that had a sticker or something, they were really touched. And then I thought, oh, it's actually not useless. Uh, and, and they were really like, oh, wow, people think about us, people care about us in this country, in this city. And every time they would spot them everywhere. And I thought that was really touching. And even though I thought it was useless, it turned out it wasn't because you had this 13 year old kid amazed, but also the mother, it wasn't just the kid. Also the mother was like, oh, wow. And I don't know, I thought it was really nice and I wanted to share it with you. Yeah, I think Thank you. International, international solidarity um, and international solidarity movements and, and, and collectives 
can like i've said it's it can be heartening it can be and 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 the cynic and us all can look at like oh well it's just tokenism it's just you know and it's little things and some of it is that but the very fact that somebody went to make the effort to try and at least symbolically try and do just i am i'm standing with you i can't do anything i can't carry any of the load but i'm standing mm -hmm. with you and there I is think something you. to be said mm -hmm. with that yeah and, and i'm thinking not ignored you're not, ignore, you're not I, in I, silence yeah mm -hmm. And, and there's probably lots of conflicts and lots of bad things in the world where people do feel ignored, do feel, you know, there's this conflict that happens all over the world. And, yeah. and I do feel for them people right now as well, because they're looking at a really bad thing in, in, in Ukraine and then going like, why, why is my pain not good enough? And that's yeah. always a sad thing too, as well. I, I have a very, um, I consider myself quite empathic and quite compassionate to the point where I have to really manage my consumption of media like that, because like, I don't, I don't handle it very well. I <laughs> just, I feel it all. And I have to work out like when I, when I let it in and when I don't. And I think it's probably more common than we realize that we, we, we isolate and we separate ourselves from pain because we can't take all the pain of the world. It's not, it's not healthy to try and it's not, it's not good for any of us, but letting it through. And, and, and again, standing in solidarity saying that, you know, this is wrong. This is, this is this is unfair and it's not a conflict and war is unfair in every front and every part of the world there's no there's no competition on that idea you, I, I you know the amount of people you could probably count on your hand the amount of people who like war they just don't exist nobody likes war there's some people use it for their own power and their own benefits but war is a is, a, is an atrocious anti-human thing and i always it's always an offensive thing so you, you're not going to really ever find pro-war people. The only people who are ever pro-war is as long as there's somebody else fighting it and it's somebody else's pain and I can get something from it either politically or financially. They're the only people who are ever like pro-war. But if it came down to like, oh, you're pro-war, but you have to go in it, no one's pro-war. No one's pro-war because it's, it's a bad thing. So I'm just going to stop now because I'm just going to keep talking otherwise. That's really true what you said. Tyler, and you're you have a lot a lot of good stuff to say. I, I practiced a lot of this. I do I it a lot. It. I do I do mental health spaces um, five to six times a week, and I do yeah mental health spaces regards to neurodivergence once a week. So I'm kind of used to talking about tough topics and, and being comfortable with it. And I've spent the last 10 years in streaming communities where I can have. That's awesome. Talk. You're, you're very good at <laughs> talking. Talking, talk at length. No, you're very good at giving to good information is what I mean. Um, so let's see. I'm going to see Maria. Did I say it right? Maria? Maria? Uh, yeah, that's true. Sorry, I will be mostly in the mute mode because I've uh, recently joined and I'm in the house full of people sleeping because I'm currently in Ukraine. Okay. So I apologize. I'm going to talk. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you just want to listen. That's okay. Where are you now? In which city? I'm in Ternopil region. Oh, okay. Okay, how are you? Oh, well, she doesn't, she can't talk, so she's just listening to us. Um, we've got Guy, Guidel, Guidel. Do you, do you want to talk? In, hey everybody, us? it's Guidel. Hi, Guidel. How are we doing? We're hanging. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted, to, it's good to, to see everybody. Uh, Thomas, good to see you again. Um, um, I have had some conversations, sidebars. I'm actually not far from Arthur, guys. I'm like, uh, you know, maybe an hour or so. Um, bummed out that uh, Richard uh, got off. I want to thank him for his service. And thank you guys for yours, uh, for everything you've done. Um, who am I? Well, um, I work in the Defense Department of the United States. Um, you know, oversee a lot of anti-terrorism and force protection operations. Um, I got started with this myself, um, two of the 13 service members that were killed in HKIA in Afghanistan were, uh, were close friends of mine. Um, so definitely, definitely going through, through a lot there, um, got involved helping our allies right away, even before that, that happened. Um, you know, as the withdrawal was kind of starting to happen, we were starting to scramble, you know, even before the summer. 
um, and have successfully, you know, happy to, to say that we've gotten a lot of families out, uh, still helping in Afghanistan. Uh, met Arthur through a mutual acquaintance and, uh, you know, said, hey, can, can you help him out? Uh, really kind of feeding a lot of the intelligence and everything uh, that's kind of going on. So there's other back channels, ground ops and stuff like that, uh, because uh, of my work and my continued work with special operations. So, um, you know, just really here to assist, uh, help in any way, shape or form that I can. Um, I'm an open book, guys. There's nothing you know secretive about me. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I uh, had some really good discussions with, with Thomas about, you know, some of the stuff that uh, I could either help with vetting or any other stuff. Uh, Cyberside is a CISO and, and standing this up. We had a Slack channel, the headaches you faced, the headaches that Arthur has been facing. We faced also when we stood up, obviously, the Afghanistan withdrawal and the Afghanistan volunteering as well. So there's certain steps that uh, we we can take, we can, we can really um, focus on to, to help us more of on a, on a lessons learned, um, you know, Moral Compass Federation, the, the, the organization that was helping in Afghanistan uh, came down to one umbrella, again, from all the, the uh, task force pineapple and all the stuff that you're on the ground. So I have been on the ground in various parts of Europe, various parts of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Western Front, um, you know, Indo-Pacific, uh, of course, the Middle East, you name it. So uh, retired war veteran, um, and again, still, still work with, with the government and have served in several humanitarian situations with several NGOs from the United States, uh, you know, Hope Worldwide, um, others, Disciples Today, um, you know, that are in heavy, heavy war conflicts. So um, help when I, when I can, where I can. So yeah, definitely, um, definitely a lot there on the, on the mental side. Hablo perfectamente el español, Daniel, para estar en España. Este, un saludo. Uh, you know, and, you know, can, can definitely relate and happy to be here. Happy to see the names to the faces now that, you know, I've kind of been seeing on, on the channels there. Uh, like Tyler, you know, Emma, you know, uh, Thomas, of course, and, and Karen. Uh, so thank you for having me and happy to happy to be here. If you have any questions, yeah, let me know. Thank you. It's one of the things that um, really brought us together as a community and uh, through through Corona Y is the, is the human conversations. It's the... It's the in between times. It's you know, in the moment you, you you're solving problems and you're fixing things together and, and you can do it in a digital way, whatever it looks like. But it's sometimes it's that in between times is when you actually like get to hang out. It's like when Slava and I would chat shit about whatever we were talking about, you know. It's it's the it's the in between times is when you get to know each other and when you actually start to build that connection up. Because otherwise we're all just robots. I mean, like you can tell a robot to do a thing and they'll do it, but you can't have a stupid conversation with a robot and have a laugh and make some jokes like that's it's not what they do they don't have that in them we're all humans so we need to kind of remember that it's a really important part of standing together is realizing that we've all got that human capacity in us and we can step up and help each other out and it's nice to see some faces and hear some voices and i'd like to do more of this if we can yeah that's what i'm i'm going to try to work on too with with archer is seeing if we could have like maybe a weekly or bi-weekly um, debrief, weekly debrief session, session just to talk about things. I mean, there were, I have, I have this little book, see, it's called If, and it's got some really kind of cute questions in it. You can talk with it, about each other just to help you loosen up like icebreakers, but I think we're past that. So we're not gonna do that ever, probably. <laughs> emergency questions unless anybody really gets bored and you want to have a just a funny question we could all talk about it. but i think yeah. we we have enough on our my place. book my book of emergency questions Wait. is great fun because it's some of the most ridiculous questions you've ever yeah. read you're like that is a what what question is this and it's just a, yeah it's just to get people thinking and talking sometimes just to i break do the occasionally sometimes. pull them out just yeah just to make someone go like i have no idea the answer to this question because it's ridiculous yeah but i i think the thing is is, is that i uh, you know, just even in some other circles I'm in, I'm as a super forecaster, I have super forecasting circles that we, we analyze things like this with Russia and stuff. Um, nobody wants to joke. You know, nobody's in the mood to make light. And I think we all realize how serious this can get. 
And um, so I think a lot of people are just really sober minded right now and um, which is a good place to be. Um, does anybody else have anything else they'd like to add? I think we have, we have more time because I've added time, but I don't want to extend the time unnecessarily as well, because I know we need to, some of us need to get back to our day to day. Uh, may I say, uh, in Kiev, uh, we are trying to joke in all the time because it helps us to get in more strong. So we're joking every day, uh, all memes about uh, Russians or our victories or some other jokes. It's uh, a really good point to get up our настрій, як буде англійською? Mood. Mood. Mood, yes, yes, mood, sorry. Um, it's hard to speak English because it's uh, uh, rare, rare for me now. And uh, we're getting um, more stupid <laughs> uh, than we were earlier because <laughs> we all day uh, reading news, uh, looking jokes. I think, I think, I think the and word is, I think the word to describe this is stir crazy. I think, I think it's been cold. I think, I think that everyone has a little bit of it. I've got COVID at the moment, so I'm genuinely starting to go stir crazy in the house. I'm just a bit like, I've wow. got, ah. <laughs> well, I've got a, I hope you feel better. You're young enough. And hopefully you'll you'll overcome pretty quick um what i what i hear some insight for you anna in my opinion i think the ukrainian people are showing extreme bravery and i mean it's you guys are, are really stepped up and i i i feel like if this happened to americans in america people would not know what to do and uh I really, uh, I think uh, that you guys are, you guys have been through it in 2014. You've been going through it for many years and you guys are upcoming democracy. You have lots of things going on, but I think you guys are very brave. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we, have, we have no uh, choice actually. Because uh, yes. Putin is going to destroy us. It's, it's true. You yeah. know what, sometimes, sometimes things don't, pan out until the rubber hits the road, but you guys have really stepped up. You guys are an example to the world. Um, Ukrainian people is too crazy. And yesterday in Borisville, it's a little city near Ukraine, uh, which has uh, the biggest Ukrainian airport. Um, there were a boy, uh, 11 years old, and uh, he come to our army post and uh, he wanted to join our army. Wow. That's that just makes me feel really, that makes me feel really sad. <laughs> it makes me feel really sad. I'm happy because obviously a little boy wants to protect people he cares about, but it's really sad that a little boy feels like he should. Well, he, he can't, uh, little boy. He sounds patriotic as well. So there's two sides of it, you know? I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's yeah. sad when a child feels like he has to protect people and that's what it comes down to. That's a sad thing when a child's innocence gets taken away uh, because he's doing yeah. some... It's sweet. It's absolutely adorable because there's a naive, beautiful, beautiful naivety to it. But it's just really sad that a little boy is scared and feels like he has to protect people to do that. But uh, it's oh. much, more, much more complicated because from other side, from Russian side, they're also sending uh, 18 years old kids. To I have kill no us. Doubt. Yeah. yeah, so it's quite the same. I, 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 yeah. I have absolute sympathy. I have, I, I have absolute sympathy for the Russian for the Russian soldiers on the ground because they have been manipulated and coerced and conscripted and told to go do a thing that's really not human. And I imagine a hell of a lot of Russians look at Ukrainians as as cousins, as 
as like like basically extended family like we're all kind of the same lots of them speak russian or or, or have enough russian connections people might have relations in U ukraine of or family that some of their family might be of ukrainian descent like i imagine there's a massive chunk of russia who's looking at this you know you, you, you should really understand with the, the mess of it you should understand that for example my father he was born in in russia and he used to live in russia for 30 years and after he moved to uh -huh. kiev and uh, basically uh, i'm half ukrainian half russian right and my wife and i'm she's sure there's one, plenty of people she, she's 100 percent russian and she has relatives in russia and they just don't, don't understand they think they're coming to liberate us from something and, Nobody and knows. i've 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 told that I've actually discussed that very point with a few friends in the sense that like there's probably lots of hoodwinked military who, 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 who see it in the same sort of way that um, any any invading force is going to liberate like how America went into Iraq as this liberating force from tyranny. There's probably an element of the same story, the same ideas were used to try and make to motivate people to go do something because they're protecting their distant family like there's there's bad people running this country but basically ukraine's kind of family so we're going to go look after them and that's and that must be really messy when the rubber hits the road and russian military turn up and the people and, and the ukrainian people are going you are you are go home we don't want you here this is wrong and the and the and the, the and the, the, the disconnect that must have happened in so many military minds that are just like what is going on like we're here to help you and you're telling me that we're the invading force and you're and we're bad like i don't understand this and that's just the nature of the echo but the, you know the book they're living in and that makes me feel sad for them because they are going to kill people and they're also going to be killed and they don't even fucking understand what's going on like that's just sad to me that's sad for everyone that's why i said war is there's no version of it that's good. It's everyone who, who fights in a war is is normally an innocent person. Like very few people are not, and that's the sad thing of it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend like what the Russians the Russian system is making the Russian people is right. It's not. But the but everyone who fights in a war is an, is is an innocent victim of the of a system that they don't always get to completely control, especially in conscripted places where conscripting into the army you don't even get it. You start or go to prison. And some people don't want to go to prison, so they go do what they're told to do because society tells them to do it. And that's really sad. It really is. It's, it's, um, and what we're, some of the information that we're hearing is we, some of the beliefs are from people like Fiona Hill, if you follow some of her, she's um, a Russian analyst for many years in DC. They're thinking it might be prolonged and it might go on for a while. I'm hoping not. Um, but in any case, we're going to be there to help rebuild. And we're going to hope that this doesn't go on for long because war is hell, like Tyler is saying. Um, anyways, guys, I actually have to leave because I, I'm, I have a day job and um, I'm doing this at my lunch hour. So... I have to take off, um, which means I have to shut down the meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Thank, yeah. so, Thank you very um, much for your time. I, I really appreciate hearing from everybody in Ukraine and I'm meeting Tyler, meeting all you guys, and I'm hoping that we can have some more of these um, debriefings and see you guys again soon. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any closing comment just real quick before we shut down? You guys take care. The guys in Ukraine really, yeah, really get all our, all our support, all our love. Yeah, and you the too. people in Ukraine just just be be safe. However, yeah. you can be. Don't, stay, stay don't, so reminded. Don't make, don't, don't make rash decisions and 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 try and be as safe as you can. And and I hope your family and you and the cities you're from are all as as safe as they can be. Because obviously, there's no version of it that's safe right now, but as safe as possible. That's right. And also, I think you can reach out if you want to talk about something completely random. That's not your friends who have lived something horrible. Just like you have such a big group of people all around the world. If one day you want, I don't know, to share a cat video with someone who is on the other side of the planet, I think you should also randomly reach out to people and, and like temporarily put your mind somewhere else. Yeah. 
And if anyone wants to reach out to me on Slack, just be my guest. Send me a direct message if you want. There is, for people who are not aware, there is a mental health um, channel space within Slack. Not everyone's necessarily in it. Um, we're going to try and keep it to the vetted people, mostly just so it don't become a massively unwieldy more than anything and don't get into pretending it's a dumping zone. But um, also there's a regular um, mental health check-in bot that like you can have you can emote, you can use it and, and put emotes onto it as how you're feeling. So if, if there's ever a time that you're feeling like you need to talk using that, because it happens, I think, every day. I check it every day. It pings me every day because it literally has my name in it. Um, but I do check it and I keep an eye on it because sometimes that's a really... I used We used it in Corona Y because it's a really just a kind of hands-off way of I'm feeling good or I'm not feeling good or I'm knackered or I'm feeling like shit or my brain's on fire, whatever it is. Like... I'm usually around. I'm usually pay. I usually pay attention to it when I can. And if there's ever yeah, someone wants to talk, if either reach out to me or I can send you to some places where nice people talk, because Twitter is full of lovely safe spaces to talk in that I hang out in. There's some really lovely nice mental health spaces in Twitter if you go look for them. Um, you just got to know how to find them. And I've found a lot of use from it. And I'm happy to hear if anyone's if if anyone needs to talk, I, I'll do what I can or I'll point you in the direction of someone that maybe does have the space and time for you. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the uh, meeting and hopefully see you again soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.